Che cazzo stai facendo? Vai via da qui. Yeah, you heard me right. I'm cussing in Italian, or at least I pretend to. And we talk a lot with our hands, aren't we? Yeah, because that's a stereotype, right? That's what you know about them Italians. Yeah. And all of the Italians talk like that, right? Uh, uh huh. Well, maybe not. And maybe not all of them do that. And maybe not all of them sound as aggressively uh, uneducated as I just did. So, careful with those stereotypes about people. And today we're going to look at those from La Bella Italia. Yeah, sure, we use the hands south of the Alps. But do we really know how to? And do we really know what all of that means? Let's check it out. Welcome to Two Chaps, Many Cultures. In an increasingly globally connected world, it is vital to possess the essential skills of cultural intelligence. Listen along as we present the topics, tips and strategies you can use to develop the power of cultural understanding in your personal and professional life. Here are your hosts, Christian Huffler and Brett Parry. Ciao amici, bentornato a Two Chaps, Many Cultures, due ragazzi e... Tutti la cultura, le culture, I guess. Ah, my Italian sucks. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. And see, my name even changed. I'm Cristiano. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> am I becoming, am I becoming Italian? I don't know. No. <laughs> and should we continue doing this and making a caricature of people's communication styles? What do you think about that, Brett? I don't know. You know, I'm certainly, I don't know if there's an, uh, an equivalent for Brett in uh, Italian, Bretto. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. But, uh, you know, I, I, first of all, I had a question. Actually, it came to mind when you were doing that. Why do we call it stereotype? If it is a one single-minded caricature of a certain group of people, why wouldn't we call it monotype? <laughs> That's, That's something I hear, but... We should what do you have explored think? that before we went live. We probably record. should have explored that. So anybody who's listening out there, um, please, as we always say, subscribe, uh, hit that bell. Then, of course, you don't have to do that to do this, but you can let us know why do we call it stereotyping. But let's not go too far down that rabbit hole. Let's talk about what we're doing today. And that's exactly what uh, we've started off with is throwing out there a few of these stereotypes that we have about a particular culture, in this case, Italy. It's a very popular culture in the world and everybody has their idea of what an Italian might sound like or look like and what, what food they eat, what uh, all of those kind of things exist in, the, in a lot of the world because Italians have found their way in a lot of the world, even my home country of Australia. Back, uh, if you, Little, all the way back to the 1600s, uh, they tagged along with the Dutch and uh, <laughs> and and went there and mapped uh, the, with the missionaries in Indonesia. They mapped the northern parts of uh, Australia, and that came from an Italian. He sent it back to the Vatican, trying to get them to come on, let's go down. This is a great place. It's sunny and forget about the snakes and the spiders and all that. They'll get over that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, this, yeah. <laughs> but then you know fast forward into you know the the the, the, the 1800s when we had the gold rush we had a lot of italians coming for the gold uh, chasing uh, chasing riches in australia and of course then later on when we had in australia the populate or perish policy where we were literally paying people to come to australia the poor people, and it really was usually the peasant farming community, were offered a chance to get passage at a very highly subsidised rate. They made their way to Australia and they found their ways uh, into places like the cotton, the cane farming in the north and things like that. And of course, back then, uh, just like there is in all of these waves of immigration that came through my country, of, and as an example in Australia, prejudice and stereotyping and this is the this was this perception of Italians and they were coming to steal our jobs and they were coming to bring their their their, their you know maybe some of their networks and their reputation around uh, how strong the family was and the family has connotations again with certain stereotypes of Italy 
This is a very well-known stereotype um, that existed in Australia. And of course, fast forward when, you know, I grew up around a lot of Italians and uh, the food, they bought their wonderful food. And of course, what else do we think of Italians? The coffee. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> so, the coffee. <laughs> the cafe. And, um, and of course, you know, that, that's uh, something that's unique in Australia. When people go there, they think, you know, why would Australians have such a coffee culture? came from the wonderful Italians. So stereotyping. Wherever the Italians went, they left a mark. And very often to, I would argue, to improve wherever they went, they brought something that didn't exist there. And I think, and we're doing this show, this program from the comfort of our US American homes, Um, Italians left a huge mark on the Americas as well. In fact, the Americas are called America because of an Italian. I'm here to go with <laughs> right? Go figure. So, there is there is some arguments to be made about the positive influences, largely positive influences that Italian cultures culture has brought across the globe. And I just corrected myself. Italian cultures, culture. Well, is there more than one? Perhaps there is, and. Most Italians will tell you that they're not a homogenous culture, even though we might think of Italy as this monolith of pizza and pasta and very expressive nonverbal communication. And yet, if you look at Italian history and how the country is made up uh, until the Risorgimento in the 19th century, Italy was split up like a big quilt like a mosaic consisting of so many different puzzle pieces like a pizza perhaps like a pizza (laughs) and uh, the languages spoken across the uh, Italian peninsula isn't always the same you go down to Sicily you go to Sardinia you go to Milan or you go to Napoli or you go to I don't know go to Bari and people will speak different forms of Italian some would even argue it's a different language so Here's where I go back even further in history. And some of you who follow internet memes, you may have come across this in recent months, this question of how much time do men, particularly men, spend thinking about the Roman Empire? Well, you should be thinking about the Roman Empire to understand this. Because 2000, some some 2000 and so-and-so years ago, Italians or the Romans conquered much of the Mediterranean world and beyond in Europe, in Northern Africa, and ventured even up into um, what is now the Nordics or what is now Eastern Europe and the Middle East. And those areas had different languages, different cultures. And they needed to communicate fast. There were people from the empire going to the heart of the empire because all roads lead where? Of course, they lead to Rome, the heart of the empire. And if you don't speak the language, if you didn't speak Latin, the precursor of Italian, then you needed your whole body to communicate the message. So there is a scientific argument to be made about why is Italian language so expressive, emotionally and physically expressive, because it people need to communicate across linguistic obstacles. We use our hands and feet and the rest of our body to relay the message. You message it, I guess. Um, (laughs) And you brought up the Australian connection with Italy. I come from a country called Germany. We're just across across the Alps Alps. on the northern side of what is today Italy. Our connection, when I say our, the German-Italian connection, even though it brought about some horrific things in the 20th century, but our connection has been just as old as the Roman Empire. The German culture, some would argue, exists only because of the Roman Empire, because we were immediate neighbors and we learned from each other and we fought each other and we loved each other. and. Just like there is lots of immigration that came to Australia from Italy, there was lots of immigration going into Germany, especially after World War II. I come from a city or near a city called Munich, which the Italians call Monaco di Baviera, la città italiana più norte, the northernmost Italian city. 
If you've ever been to Munich, you will recognize the Italian influence in that city, both in forms of architecture, in forms of cuisine, and Italians will confirm, I don't have to say this even though I'm doing it now, but Italians will tell you much more convincingly than I, that the best coffee in Germany, you'll get in Bavaria. It's because of the Italian influence. <laughs> There mm. seems to be a thread here with coffee. And pasta and pizza. And Where pasta and pizza. And then you find lots of Italian immigration that went to the Americas and Hollywood movies, Scorsese and uh, what's the other guy? Uh, Coppola. They made, made movies that perpetuated some of those stereotypes. Sometimes in favor of Italian culture, sometimes more like libel, you would, you could argue, right? It, Italian culture suffered from being stereotyped probably more than many other cultures around the world. And that's why we began this episode with uh, all the Italians do this and talk like this. All of them? Really? Have you been to Italy? They don't. Just as not as any other stereotype will only hold up this much until you really get closer to it and, and find out about the reality, the real life. Of mm. that. Well, of course, and before the advent of internet and uh, global news and 24 hour news cycles and things like that, those populations that came and settled these countries essentially were disconnected from their home country. So there's, there's we've seen that I've seen this with Greek clients where they'll say, you know, I've come to America and I see Greek communities here and they do things and practice traditions and they, and, and it's almost like, this is not what we do now in Greece. Mm. This is different, but it's kind of, it's historically been carried on by the immigrant population here. And that can be uh, some source of that stereotype too. Whereas the country moves on, evolves, and the people change, the culture is dynamic, and it's not a, a monolith. And and but but the new people that have come here and historically settled want to carry carry on those traditions, that connection. So they may actually, and you know, with, with in their own uh, by their own interests and by their own actions, um, promulgate some of those stereotypes. So. So that's a, you know, and you told, told me that an interesting connection between Bavaria and, uh, and Italy. It's an interesting connection there. And that's just one example of that. So let's think about, you know, when we do work with uh, people, we're obviously applying some of our tools that we use like GlobeSmart. And we think about the profiles of a country. And this, uh, of course, imbues the connection between communication styles like we talked about, the more expressive hand gestures, um, uh, the more high context use of context in, in uh, an Italian a language like Italy, Italian, um, and then the uh, the attitude to work and the attitude to all that. So where do we find that, mate? Where, where, where do we see here Italy falling in that? Well, I think it's e easily misconstrued as the impression that one might think because of their emotional and physical expressiveness, Italians have a very direct style of communication, and. If you look at the data, if you look at the available information we have in cultural comparison frameworks like GlobeSmart, Italy ranks, well, dead center, more leaning on indirect communication styles. So the language itself, the, the words and the tonality used is not very direct compared to, let's say, let's say German, Dutch, English communication style or American English communication styles. And yet the directness that we perceive is probably transported in the nonverbals, right? If there is direction given or emotion or threats or disagreement or disinterest shown through nonverbals, that could easily give us the impression that the communication style is quite direct. The words are not so much, the body language is. And I've heard it said by Italians that, well, some things are not to be said. That implies not to be said verbally out loud. Mm. And yet we do say it with the nonverbals, right? So the body language in Italian culture and Italian communication style does what the actual 
verbal communication doesn't do. The directness that is not as pronounced in the verbal communication Italian language is added to it by the nonverbal, which can be confusing if you go there for the first time and you come from a culture where you show emotional restraint and you yeah. find that irritating. I found that quite fascinating, I still do. And those of you who know me and who've traveled with me know that I, my happy place or one of my happy places in the world is a part of Northern Italy that's called Alto Adige, which has only been Italian for about a hundred years. Before that, it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Habsburg Empire. And after World War I, the winning parties ruled that this portion of land should be given to Italy and it became part of the Italian state. And Italian government since started to italicize it. So it's a, a bilingual area up in the mountains in Northern Italy. And it's fascinating, even those parts of the population that speak German first, they all also speak Italian. It's a completely bilingual area. But even the German native speakers in that area are using Italian body language, even when they communicate to me in German. They will look Italian in the way they communicate. Case in point that proximity creates relatability and then we assimilate and we absorb each other's communication and behavioral patterns. Yeah. And, you know, those, and of course you've told me about that wonderful uh, area. And of course that is the connection with food too, right? The, the, the gastronomic expression that comes from a mix of cultures like that. And, you know, and we, we think about this as maybe Italians as like a bit of an Epicurean culture. So they love the creative arts and the creative arts makes its way into fashion, makes its way into the, the food, makes its way into the cars that they produce, the Ferrari and the Maserati. Uh, these kind of... Don't the, the, you the lunches and the Fiat's? Come in, on. I'm, and the not, other I'm not diminishing them at all. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And... <laughs> even even the little even the little Vespa, the Vespa on. too, right? The Vespa, but still Vespas. You know, they are a beautiful machine. They may not be exactly fast, but they're efficient, and they're but they are a beautiful machine. And people collect them and spend. You know, and it's a representation. If you see a picture, this is how strong this is for us as humans. You see a picture of a Vespa, and you immediately go to Italy. You, you immediately kind of uh, put that uh, connection. This is how strong these kind of things are. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I know that you love a character who un unfortunately is no longer with us, but uh, that, that described his idea about what he discovered in Italy, right? I, I would call him the patron saint of interculturalists or my spirit, not animal, my spirit <laughs> being, I guess, yeah. Anthony Bourdain, uh, the late Anthony Bourdain, who, and I'm quoting from his book, he talked about Italy and specifically about Rome. And he wrote, to me, it's not the big things they tell you about, the sculptures, the imposing squares and buildings, the monuments, though they are amazing. It's the little things, the tiny details, the improbable awesomeness of every little damn thing. Yep, and I agree with you, Tony Bourdain, because once you get to know Italy at that level, and this is what Brett and I've been talking about on this program, or since we started, culture isn't a monolith. It's in the nuances. It's in the fine-grained details where you find the awesomeness in every little damn thing. And you will realize that how people use their body to communicate transports emotion, positive and negative. It is a form of expression that can be so beautiful if we learn how to read it and listen to it with our whole being. And then it becomes more than a stereotype. It becomes understanding between people. And that's what we're both here for, aren't we? Uh, we certainly are. And okay, so let's is that like a pizza where you just throw a bunch of ingredients and, and the, oh, the mix? You started, <laughs> oh, you said a bunch of ingredients. Oh, you mean like 
All the kitchen stuff? That's that's oh, right. And that's, I know, see? And that's what we think of in, in, in my country. Like if you think of pizza, some cultures think, yeah, just you just throw on a bunch of food on a on a piece of kind of bread like substance and 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 yes, you do that to Italians and of course they will go bananas because you know, pizza is an art and it is no a bananas on the pizza. No, no bananas. And while we're at it, no pineapple. Oh, I know. No, okay, we're going to we're going to have a problem here. We have a problem like we're doing. <laughs> I'm a pizza, I'm a pineapple pizza guy. So, just yeah, I'm, like, yeah, I'm Australian. I'm a I'm a pineapple on hamburger guy too. So, maybe it's just something to do with yeah. I'm not opposed to pineapple at all. Um I think, <laughs> I think I've talked to Italians who would agree with you. Right. I think it's not the tradition. No. Maybe no. three ingredients, four ingredients tops. You need some red sauce, you need yeah. some mozzarella, you need maybe some prosciutto, some olivas, maybe some, maybe, I don't know, anchovies. Yeah. But maybe. Pineapple. I'll oh. give you that one. There is no way in the world I would order pineapple on a pizza in Italy for the fear of being ex ex I... excommunicated and, and extracted. Maybe there is such a thing. Tell us. Write it in the comments. Yeah. Show, show us which pizza place you've been to in Italy that serves pizza with pineapple. I'm sure there is. I'm, I, I will be surprised if there is. Okay. Well, you know, maybe tourist areas. But this is yeah. it. I think that was very profound, mate. I think that is something we can almost end on because uh, just what Christian said, right? This is the beauty and drawing on Anthony Bourdain's uh, attitude wherever he went in the world. You know, there is so much magic to be, to be found in not only the, the physical intricacies of a culture, but also just the spiritual and the ling linguistic uh, and the relationship side of things uh, in a country, especially as complicated and with uh, such a long history in a place like Italy. These things, you know, I've, I've been to Italy, you can see them everywhere, you know, and if you're attuned, like I think uh, Christian and I are, just from sheer annoying, uh, annoying people, <laughs> yeah, we, we can be a little bit annoying to people because we might just kind of ask random strangers. <laughs> oh, talk about yourself, mate. Don't include me in this. Hey, listen, I, I know what you're like too. Don't worry. I've been with you. I've traveled in many parts of the world with you. I know you'll like it too. It's just, a, it's, it's curiosity. It's curiosity to look yourself in the mirror and go, yes, I like pineapple pizza and I love that, but I wouldn't do it here in Italy because look at the, just the, it's, it's like the complication in the simplicity. There's, there's one I'm going to throw at you. Look at that. Look at that. It is the beauty of the complication in the simplicity of a pizza that just has two or three ingredients with a nice, uh, you know, a nice, cleansing beer <laughs> something like that yes <laughs> exactly yes Pierre. exactly Pierre Alfredo. yeah now, I, I give you the pineapple pizza if you give me the never ever coffee with milk after breakfast absolutely okay no, right. i'll give you that i i, I don't get coffee with milk anyway so you know yeah, yeah, for I'm... breakfast the cappuccino that uh yeah. Yeah. sure for breakfast good There's good no cappuccino for lunch or dinner or any time after breakfast. That's you right. Know, you can have all your pineapple pizza you want. Yeah. So, you know, stereotypes actually can be valuable in getting a little bit of that protocol knowledge before you go to Italy. And do not get yelled at by somebody behind <laughs> the coffee counter uh, when you're asking for a cappuccino at three o'clock in the afternoon. Just I don't think they will yell at you. They will just roll their eyes and, <laughs> and turn around and cuss you out in the town. <laughs> And though it probably with body language that you don't understand, that would be <laughs> Yeah, it would say. Perfect. That's uh, great. Um, well, have we covered it all. Have we covered all the stereotypes? I mean we could sit here all day and blow up stereotypes, you know. Many of them. I think we should stop here, otherwise uh, our Italian friends will send somebody for us. Is it? <laughs> You're done now. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's it. Two chaps, many cultures, many cultures, many in uh 
variations of cultures around the world where too much culture is barely enough. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please, as we always invite you to do, tell us what you think. Uh, what have you discovered? What magical things have you discovered in Italy? If you've been there, if you've traveled there, we'd love to know and uh, because probably we'd love to go there and uh, explore those for ourselves. That would be fantastic. We would highly appreciate it. So that's it. Uh, another episode in the can for another week. Come back next week. We'll be back again. Uh, same bat channel, same bat time. Well, well, it is bat time. It's like Tuesday, every Tuesday or so. <laughs> and we wish you a very good week. And uh, any final thoughts? Uh, my friend. Arrivederci. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.